I'm going to give you two ways to measure the speed of light. One is an old fashioned way and was the way that we first discovered that light indeed does have a finite speed. And the other way is using something in your kitchen. And yes, I'm pointing in the direction of my kitchen, which I might go over there after this video and, and measure the speed of light on my own because I can. <laughs> the old way is credited to Ol Romer, a, an astronomer who was living in the late 1600s, and he was staring at Io. This is the, the first moon of Jupiter, and it orbits Jupiter a lot, and sometimes it goes behind or in front. There are little eclipses of Io. And Romer was staring at it, and it's basic eclipse setup, like uh, Io would go behind Jupiter, and we'd wait a few days, and then it would pop back out. And then we wait, and then there's another eclipse, and then it pops back out. All right, no big deal. The time between eclipses should be the same, because what's what could possibly be messing with Io's orbit? We've been measuring it for a long time. Romer found, though, that the eclipses of Io sometimes were a little bit shorter by a few minutes, and sometimes they were a little bit longer by a few minutes. What's going on? Romer, over the course of a couple years, realized that there was a connection between the time it took for Io to eclipse again and where we were in our orbit around the sun. And when we were on our orbit approaching Jupiter, getting closer to Jupiter, the eclipses were coming a few minutes early. And when we were on our way out, moving away from Jupiter, the eclipses were coming a little bit later. So if there is something messing with Io's orbit, how would it know where we are in the solar system? Why does our position in the solar system matter when it comes to Io orbiting around Jupiter? It doesn't. Something funny is going on. Romer, after a few calculations, made the claim that light travels at a finite speed. And what's happening is like, let's say we're in a certain position in our orbit around the sun and we see uh, Io get eclipsed. Then we move over the course of those few days for while we're waiting on the next eclipse, we move in our orbit. We move away from Jupiter. Well, what's going to happen? Io is going to pop back out from Jupiter, but then the light has to travel to our old position, which is where we were, but now it has to travel an extra distance to catch up to us. And that extra distance causes the delay in the apparent eclipse of Io. And the opposite is true if we're moving towards Jupiter. We see an eclipse in a certain position in our orbit. A few days pass and we're a little bit closer to Jupiter. So light has a so the light from the event of the eclipse ending doesn't have to travel as far, and so we see it a few minutes earlier. Romer came up with a number that's, uh, I think, within 20% of our modern value, which isn't so bad for the late 1600s. But if you want a more accurate number, you can go, like I said, into your own kitchen and get, a, get out your microwave oven. Get out your microwave. Light is made of waves of electricity and magnetism. These are electromagnetic waves. And any kind of wave, from sound wave to ocean wave to waves on a slinky to electromagnetic waves, have a relationship between speed, wavelength, and frequency. If you multiply the wavelength and the frequency, you get the speed. So if you know those two numbers, you can get the speed. The frequency of the microwaves in your microwave oven, well, that's printed on the back or in the manual. It operates at a specific frequency. That's the number. For the wavelength, you can put a paper towel, like a wet paper towel, in the microwave and take out the turntable because that will ruin this. Run your microwave for a while and you, what, pull out your paper towel, paper towel and you will see either dry spots or if you run it too long, scorch marks, you'll see a bunch of parallel lines. The parallel lines are where the electromagnetic waves, those microwaves, are at their peak. And then the, the wet parts or the unburned parts of the paper towel, that's where they're at a trough. So you can measure the distance between peaks of the microwaves. That is the wavelength. So you get out a ruler, measure that, multiply that against the frequency that's printed on the back. Voila, speed of light.
just that easy. And you might even get a more accurate number than Romer. Depends on how good your rulers are. Uh, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. And feel free, I'm serious, do this at home. It's, it's a legit size experiment that you can do at home to measure the speed of light. As always, I always uh, appreciate your contributions to Patreon. That's patreon.com slash PM Sutter. You know, do it while you're microwaving your paper towels. And uh, you can also like, share, and subscribe to all the usual YouTube things. And I'll see you next week.